if you might have trust issues in your relationships. And I don't just mean personal relationships, but the good news about this particular piece of information is it can apply to both your personal relationships as well as your professional relationships. And the reason why is there's this um, methodology that I follow, which is called the fourth truce of CBL, which is communication-based lead leadership. And the third principle down there says that leadership is about relationships. And so if you have some relationships that need some mending, this might be the video for you. Hi, I'm Jackie Schwab. I am the founder of the Press Plate Lifestyle um, Transformation Program, and I'm also a professional success coach. And so very recently, I've had actually quite a few clients who are struggling with either personal relationships or professional relationships. For example, one of my clients is um, her, her role in the organization was there were three main founders of her startup and she was not one of the founders, but she was like employee number one on the first startup and then employee number one on the second startup. Well, they're getting to a point where the organization is growing and some of the, one of the other leaders has left and she would like to be um, given a title commensurate with her time, her position, and the work that she's doing. And she's very good friends with one of the leaders. Well, it turns they're they're having um, an issue, right? They're have, they have There's some trust that's been broken, and she's trying to figure out how to both get what she wants and needs while still re retaining that relationship. Um, and then I actually am working with two sets of couples right now, um, both which have had some infidelity in the past, and they're kind of struggling to put the pieces back together in their relationship. So if we kind of talk through each of those, we'll get, let's get some tips and tricks. So the very first thing to think about when you're having um, some issues in your relationships, right, if you have some trust issues, is actually to work on your own self-esteem. Now, that may not seem like it makes too much sense for you, but here's what we're talking about. So working on your own self-esteem. Very often in, in a relationship, some of the trust issues actually are stemming from personal insecurities. So if you recently lost a lot of weight and you're not really sure how you're feeling about that, um, if you recently uh, had some kind of body image thing or someone said something to you that wasn't very nice, if you felt like your self-worth was being rejected, like our first client who's um, feeling like because they don't think that she's worthy of that one position or title, she's really taken sort of a hint to her self-esteem. So very often, one of the first things you can consider if there's this trust um, shakeup in the relationship is, is looking first at yourself before looking at the other person. You know, what can you do to feel more confident? What can you do to feel potentially more attractive if that's the situation? Um, what can you do to feel more um, secure in your personal body and what you think is important? So the first thing to consider is looking at your own personal self-esteem. Now, the next is the next thing that you can consider in when you're trying to sort of resolve a conflict in a relationship, either at work or at home, is reflect a little bit on your own past. So in terms of um, in a business relationship, uh, I'm probably a good example. One of the first, first few jobs I had, I only had for about 18 months. And then I would go to another job and I'd have that like all these stupid companies, this, that, and the other. But I never really thought, wait a minute, um, I don't stay somewhere very long. Is it every single time somehow the company or like my boss was the problem? Or is it possible that I had some culpability in this? Um, now, it turns out there were a few things I might have needed to work on. Um, and, and I think sometimes that happens at work relationships as well as personal like, did something happen in your childhood that makes it hard for you to trust others? Are there certain words or phrases that people use that immediately trigger you to be like, nope, not trustworthy, that person's lying? Um, did your parents divorce when you were very young? Did you have a boss 
fire you for no reason? Were you, um, have you been violated in some way? Have you been sexually abused? Have you been ab abused physically or emotionally by a boss? Um, I had one boss um, and that caused quite a bit of conflict me for me to struggle with conflict quite a bit um, who got who stood up above me once and in my face and started swearing at the top of his lungs about how we weren't dedicated and we we're in on a Saturday afternoon. I mean, you've got to be kidding me. And to make matters worse, or at least I felt it made matters worse, um, the other seven people in the room thought it was perfectly acceptable for someone to scream at someone like they were an aunt. So look at your past. You know, maybe there's something going on that really triggers you and really causes you to maybe, maybe that trust issue is stemming from a trust violation in, in your past and not necessarily with this particular person. So, um, it's, it's not always the other person, right, that can be a reason for there being this mistrust. Now, the, the third one is um, really hard, I think, depending on the indiscretion or hurt feelings. But um, in a work situation, right, an indiscretion could not necessarily be like a cheating situation. Um, what if you were promised a promotion and then for some reason it just didn't work out that way? or you were promised some kind of um, equity award, or you were told that you were being groomed for leadership and then someone else got that position. Uh, it can feel like an indiscretion, right? You know, you feel like you were lied to, you feel like your trust was betrayed, you feel like you put all this effort in. So that would be the work version of that, right? In terms of a relationship, it could legitimately be either emotional cheating or physically cheating. And um, just know that the you have to have that conversation, right? If you continually feel like your work situation, you were screwed out of that position, you're going to hold that resentment until there's some chance that it actually could be resolved. If you're in a relationship with a partner and the cheating was to say it's emotional, maybe they didn't think that it was really cheating, but you felt that it was, if that if you don't have a conversation about what happened and how you feel, you just kind of get this resentment that built boils and bubbles for the time that you're, you're in that relationship. Um, and very often it probably won't last that long. So in both situations, both personal and professional, it's a good idea to have the conversation. Now, the fourth thing that you can do in building trust in a relationship that you're struggling with is to, um, Sometimes you just need a sign of recommitment. You'll see this um, when people do their vows again, right? So uh, they'll go out and they'll say, they'll do a repeat of their vows. That often happens when people have been married 20 years or 30 years or 40 years because it's been such a long time and they just want to recommit to one another and, and show their love. But there's also something um, in that into the workplace. So and I, and I personally had this happen to myself or to me as well. And the client that I was talking about a little earlier did too. Sometimes it's, you have to stop and go, okay, look, do I want to be in this job? Yes. Do I, do I like the position I have right now? Well, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Is there really been a violation then? Is there really a trust violation? Maybe there was, but are you going to commit, forgive and move forward? Or are you going to hold on to that resentment? And it really makes a difference if you kind of pause and decide to not be angry anymore and decide to stay, decide to commit. Um, even do something special with perhaps the, the boss or the founder that, you know, you, you kind of are feeling ill will, will toward. Go out to a lunch and celebrate being happy with having a great functioning company. Go out to lunch and celebrate um, feeling fulfilled in your work and that you've decided you are fulfilled in your work. Um, sometimes just having can really recommit you and solidify that new relationship, um, one that you're going to build off of new trust components. But um, recommitting yourself is potentially the fourth way. And then um, number five of the, of the ones we're going to cover today is spend more time together, right? So you guys, in your work relationships, work is always changing, right? Bosses are changing, um, coworkers are changing, dynamics are changing, environments are changing. 
And if you really just don't interact with your team or you're not interacting with your boss or you're not going to team meetings or you're not showing up to town hall meetings, really not spending that quality time with your coworkers or with your boss just, just reignites that feeling that you can't trust them. It re um, it brings up those feelings of insecurities and it, and it makes you be concerned. Now, the other piece is if you're, if the relationship is a personal relationship, um, if they feel, if either side feels like there is like a, a break in trust and you're trying to both reconnect, recommit, being with the person, right? Being alongside them, witnessing their changes, devoting time to one another. It, it just shows that you are recommitted. It shows that you want to be with them. And very often in relationship, people just feel like, you know, you've wished to drift apart. And it may not be that you drifted apart. It might just be that you are apart, right? You're not, you're not spending the time with one another. So consider that, you know, spending a little more time with your boss, if that's the person that you're struggling with, spending a little more time with that coworker that maybe was totally getting on your nerves, or in, if in home situations, spending a little more time with your loved one. Um, all of those are opportunities for you to increase their trust in your relationships. And communication-based leaders and good leaders, one of the components of being a great leader is having good relationships. Now, acknowledging though, right, as always, not all these tips work for everyone. Um, you may see that you shouldn't recommit to that relationship. Maybe it isn't a good work environment for you. Perhaps they're not going to be able to meet your needs. And it is important that you make those decisions as well, right? Yes, this relationship is not going to go the way that I need it to go. And therefore, I'm making that decision. So in that case, um, it's never a bad idea to work on your self-esteem, of course. But um, maybe there isn't something in your past that the person just really hurts you deeply or they have um, continually done some indiscretions or you just you just don't have a desire anymore to recommit yourself. So it's, it's very possible that that these tips don't work for everyone in rebuilding a relationship, but um, it doesn't always hurt to try, right? So hopefully you found this helpful. And if you did, please take the time to like whichever side of the screen that is on. Please like or share with a friend who maybe is struggling in a trust issue in a relationship or trust issue in a, in a work situation with a coworker. Um, share with that friend. Hopefully they can get some value out of it. And otherwise, come over and join us in our free Success with Balance for Entrepreneurs Facebook group. Um, connect with others just like you that are trying to just make it right? Get through a day, deal with some relationships, be good leaders. Um, you'll find a lot of people just like you over there in the group. And this is Jackie Schwab reminding you to embrace your pause, play the game you want to win, and prosper with a life by design, not by default. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.